This is the Grand Titan, released in 2006 as part of the original LEGO Exo Force Wave. Perhaps the most underrated LEGO theme ever. At least, that's my opinion, and that's the agenda that I'm going to be trying to push on you in this video and any subsequent uh, LEGO Exo Force videos. Now, that wave launched with three mechs similar to this one. They were all $15 in the U.S. at the time, and that is just kind of outrageous for something the size that this is. Now, this is only a 196-piece set, but it is far larger than what you would think of than a $15 set. And for me, as a kid at the time when these came out, for one, I thought these were the coolest things ever. And for two, they were like pretty affordable. I could afford these with my allowance. And that's saying something. I was not able to pick up expensive Lego sets back in the day, but I had a bunch of these guys because they were so darn cheap. Grabbing something for scale, grabbing something for scale, grabbing something for scale. Oh, I grabbed the $45 2021 TIE Fighter to compare for scale. And of course, some might find that a bit rich at $45. However, the comparison stands. Although the Grand Titan is only 196 pieces, the way they're distributed and this the bulk of some of the pieces make it still a pretty formidable outline, a formidable silhouette. Pretty bulky, chunky boy. And that's part of what makes the Grand Titan so grand. Of course, it's impossible not to notice right away the all red color scheme. Broke it up by bits of black and gray. There is some white detail, but really only on the stickers. Now, you might think this guy is just designed to stand there and look cool, but you'd be very wrong. This thing actually has a lot of play features jam-packed into it. First, we should probably look at our one minifigure included in this set. And if there's one knock on these guys, it's just that they came with one minifigure. However, this is a pretty crazy one for the time. Still a yellow face, and that's a little, little new of a set to be using the yellow face. I think they disappeared shortly after perhaps they use this one just for some kind of effect these guys are obviously very anime inspired so maybe they just wanted to make it less realistic whatever the case i still think it's a cool figure the hair piece is absolutely crazy that was brand new at the time it's actually a rubbery material it's it's not as the solid plastic that most hair pieces are i think that has to do with something about the color that they were going for this really really bright green now, another thing that was crazy for Exoforce back in the day is that these guys actually had double-sided faces well before uh, at least most Star Wars figures were getting them, and I think this has something to do with the fact that Exoforce is a, a LEGO IP, so they really wanted to boost it by giving it the best stuff, but either way... Pretty cool there. This one's more of a focused, determined face. You know, no leg printing. This was, a, you know, this was back in the day. They didn't really do that at the time. But, you know, he's got an interesting torso print. He's got the little Sentai mountain on there, which is, you know, the, the setting of the, the story. No back printing either. It's a little bit disappointing for a 2006 figure. But, uh, you know, you're not really going to be looking at his back because his whole purpose is to stand in the mech. <laughs> So with him situated back where he belongs, we are going to take a look at some of the play features. First of all, his weapons, which are, are going to be immediately noticeable, are this huge pair of scissors and his, uh, you know, what is that, even like six barrel blaster. Uh, we'll take a look at the, the uh, sword first, the blade. I'm not really sure what this is called in universe, but it can open up pretty wide at that. No, that's about as wide as they go before the uh, ends of the, the butt ends of the the piece uh, butt up against each other. But you know that's plenty wide to get a uh, a robot mech with a pretty good chomp right there, and that's how I like to pose it. Uh, I think it looks good, also just with the uh, just with them together like that. Of course, got multiple stickers on that thing for detail. But you know it just opens and closes, kind of an imaginative play feature, but a good one at that. And we have a blaster on the other side. The barrel spins pretty freely. And if we put this thing straight at the camera, we can also get a look at what makes this so special. Now, you might have noticed the big ass tube 
running from the center of the mech down to the end of the arm, and that is connected to a light brick that you can kind of see right behind uh, Takeshi. I forgot to name the minifigure, but his name is Takeshi. And what you're supposed to do is pull down on this thing right here, and if you pull down on this, it, there's a mechanism that actually turns the light brick on. And it is a red light, although if shining straight at the camera, it's going to look going to look uh, more white. But yeah, you can imagine that this gun is is, is firing off if you want to press it a bunch of times to give it more of like a repeating gun effect. This light bri brick has a pretty fresh battery. I did that myself. But uh, these batteries definitely died with time. And uh, if you had an original from 2006, you definitely would have needed to replace it, which you can do with a bit of uh, just like a knife and you got to find the correct battery. But either way, uh, you know, that's what it looks like when it's when it's bright. Uh, if I were to turn out the lights, you could see it running down the entire fiber optic cable there, but I'm not going to do that. That's one cool feature. And another thing with the light brick is uh, this little knob on top, which I suppose could be kind of a handle. Not really useful that way. But all of the mechs in the original Exoforce line had this feature where if you press down on this thing, it ejects the light brick because it's not actually held in by any studs. It's just held in by its connection with the cable and a little bit of friction. You can get a better look at the light brick now. I think these were imagined to be the cores of the mech, like the power core. So if they were needing to self-destruct, they could eject the core or something like that as a last ditch bomb. So I just did it off camera, but it is a bit of a chore to get the light brick back in there considering you have to connect a bendy cable into a little Lego uh, bar hole. So. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's not too difficult either. I never really used the ejecting core feature as a kid. Just never really saw that much point to it, but it's there for those who like that kind of thing. If we take a look at just the design of this thing, I absolutely love the silhouette. I think it looks really unique and beefy. It looks very different from all the other mechs in the wave. It's definitely got that enforcer feel to it. And they were able to accomplish that with not even too many pieces. The joints of this thing are all posable. And these are an old ball joint design that clicks. Uh, so it's got, you know, a bunch of bunch of rotation that it can do. But it's got, it stops every so many degrees. So, you know, you can kind of twist them around. You can get all kinds of posability. You can't get as, well, you actually, now that I say it, you can get a bunch of posability out of the feet. So that your only real limitation is just going to be the center of gravity. But with this one, considering how, uh, well, it has its limits, clearly. Um, but considering how well distributed its weight is, how spread out it is horizontally, you can pose this one in a in a variety of, of ways and it will still stand up straight, which I think is pretty cool. It also owes to the large feet that this thing has. Now, I will say compared to some of the Ninjago mechs and other stuff that they're making nowadays, this build just really isn't as detailed and not as, as displayable from that point of view. However, for the time, this is kind of par for the course for LEGO or even maybe slightly above or I guess below par would be the way to say it. It doesn't really bother me. It's got a classic look to it. The one thing that does bother me a little bit is the flimsiness of these. Uh, this one is not the worst defender by any means. This one's actually fairly sturdy, but uh, you know, there's still pieces that can kind of fall off without too much trouble. I mean, like this is just connected on with studs. You know, these guys can't really fall off, but they can loosen. They're actually held in at the back. Uh, via Technic, which is nice, but they can still loosen. If you if you drop this thing, you're definitely going to lose a couple of pieces. You know, from a design standpoint, really the only downside to me is the back just doesn't have anything at all. No detail, no no inverted anything to kind of give it a rounded uh, design. Just, just nuts and bolts, straight up inverted studs, which I'm not really that fond of. The back of the legs are bare as well. This is definitely meant to be displayed only from the front. And I guess that's kind of what you get at a $15 price point. Uh, now, all these details on here are stickers. There are a whole lot of them. However, I do think they really do add a lot of character to this. I built this one without the stickers, and then I was just kind of looking at it, and it looks nice and clean and whatever, but it just is, doesn't have the same character without them, so I ended up applying them. Yeah, I think it definitely looks better with the stickers. Now, it's important to talk about the price that this thing currently goes for. It is not nearly as affordable as it used to be, considering it's a secondary market only type of thing now. New inbox, you're looking at 
potentially up to $70 for this, which isn't brutal, but considering it was 15 back in the day, you know, you just remember for inflation, that was probably more like 20, but still 20, 22, 23, whatever. It still hurts a little bit. Obviously, I made the decision to do it and I don't regret it. I think this thing is amazing. If you have nostalgia for it, it's especially worth it. Even if you don't, Exoforce is an incredible line. It unfortunately was killed by Lego pretty early, only a couple years into its lifetime. Exoforce was definitely gone too soon. If you want to get back into it, you know, there'll never be a better time. The Grand Titan was always awesome when it released. It is incredibly awesome now, and I cannot do anything but recommend this wholeheartedly to anyone who is interested. This is the video. Thank you guys for watching. I will have more ExoForce videos coming up. Uh, I'll be mixing them in with the regular Star Wars, World War II, and random other LEGO stuff. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.